Hello, and welcome to the start of Section 3 of AWS Essentials. In this particular section, we're going to dig deep into some of the real meat of AWS, and I think that this is really where a lot of the fun starts to begin. So, this is what we're going to be talking about in this section, the AWS VPC. Now, there's a lot that I just threw on here, but what this really is, is the backbone of the infrastructure of any systems that we decide to build in AWS. And over the course of the next few lessons, we're going to dive in and talk about all of these different components. So without further ado, let's dive in. So AWS Essentials, Section 3, Virtual Private Cloud, or better known as VPC for short. So the topics we're going to cover in this section include an overview of AWS Global Infrastructure, VPC Introduction and Explanation, how data travels through AWS architecture covering internet gateways, route tables, network access control lists, and subnets. So let's jump into lesson one, AWS Global Infrastructure, in which we're going to talk briefly about regions, availability zones, and data centers. Now, if you took the AWS concepts course that we offer here at Linux Academy, this will be a bit of a rehash, and I'll be moving through this fairly quickly. But AWS Global Infrastructure starts with AWS regions, and regions are grouping of AWS resources located in a specific geographical location. So looking at the map down here, which is provided by Amazon, each one of these dots here, circles, is either a current region or a pending region which they are developing. And these regions are designed to service AWS customers or your users that are located closest to a region. So regions are really just pockets or areas where AWS resources are located. So if you're located in the United States on the East Coast, you want to use AWS services that are actually run on servers in that geographical area. Therefore, there is less latency in terms of data transfer between you and the AWS servers. Another side of that is you may be located in the United States, but you have customers which you are serving in Tokyo. Say you have a web application where people in Tokyo are accessing it. You don't want them to have to connect to a web server in North Virginia. You want them to be able to access a server in Tokyo, which you have set up and run through your AWS accounts so that the users in Tokyo can access the web app there with as little latency as possible. Now, each region is comprised of multiple availability zones. Now, avail availability zones are geographically isolated zones within a region that house AWS resources. And availability zones are where specific physical AWS data centers are located. And multiple availability zones in each region provide redundancy for AWS resources in that region. So what I mean by that is in North Virginia, there will be multiple availability zones, and these are actually specific data centers that are separated regionally. So what this allows is that, let's say for instance, that you're storing data in a Amazon S3 bucket. The S3 service is going to back up your files across multiple availability zones. So say that there is an earthquake or a fire or a power outage at availability zone one, you will still be able to access your files because they will have been backed up out of, at availability zone two and availability zone three. So multiple availability zones provide redundancy for the AWS resources. And this is part of AWS's highly available fault tolerant architecture. And then drilling down into each availability zone is where you find an actual physical data center, which is where all the actual hardware is that runs Amazon Web Services. So all of the wires, the, the circuits, the computers, the, the storage, the servers, all of the components that make the cloud run are located here. And I always kind of find it really funny and interesting when we refer to Amazon Web Services and similar services as cloud computing, when really everything is occurring in traditional data centers. So now when you look at the actual data center, you then really come back to this, which is the diagram that we have been working with so far in its entirety. And all I want you to take from this is that 
in these actual data centers, that is where all of this is actually taking place. So your VPC, your EC2 instances, your databases, SNS, S3, IAM, all the things that you do when you're using the console here, right? You're really just logging in and using systems that are located in a physical data center, which are located in an availability zone, which are located in a region somewhere around the world. Right now, I'm currently in the North Virginia region. So that means that if I use any services here, what I'm actually doing is launching and using services right here in North Virginia in one of these availability zones in the physical data center. So with that, as a quick overview of AWS Global Infrastructure, and that starts the process of us learning about AWS VPC. And with that, we will conclude this lesson. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.